At the end of last week's episode of The Acolytes, the Master showed up and proved to everyone that he means business, effortlessly casting everybody on the light side of the Force away with a flick of a wrist. This week, The Acolyte picks up right from there, showing us the true power of the Sith Lord. Of course, we didn't need to see the Master in action to know how ferocious a Sith Lord they were. Their look told us enough. As you might expect, that's by design by Jennifer Bryan, the costume designer for The Acolytes. When designing the mask with Star Wars creature design veteran Neil Scanlon, they knew it had to be in line with the aesthetics of the Star Wars dark side, while also feeling like something new. Quote, My department had many concepts because, for the character, everything has to look symbiotic. Masks, cloak, everything has to work together, Brian told Polygon, noting how grateful she is for the high degree of collaboration between Star Wars departments. The goal, as with many Sith, was simple. Communicate danger. Quote, It needed to be threatening. It needed to be dark. And it needed to be something you never ever saw before but there was something familiar about it. There was some hammering out of details. Brian says earlier mock-ups emphasized different parts of the face, like the eyes. But to the final point, she drew from two specific sources. She gave the helmet a flare at the base of the neck to evoke Darth Vader. Quote, It will unconsciously register with the audience that this is a guy you need to watch your back with, she says, naming him and Darth Maul as two points of Star Wars inspiration. But the defining feature, that toothy, venom-like grin, came from a different place altogether. Quote, Leslie Headland, the Acolyte's showrunner, says she thought about the Bad Bunny and Donnie Darko. Brian says, There was something kind of grotesque about that. I think the idea Leslie wanted was for you to get a sense of dread when you see this character up close finally. That sort of communication of character was key even before we knew who the Master was. By the time we find out that Manny Jacinto's Chimera is actually the Sith Lord the Jedi have been chasing all along, Brian wanted us to get a certain sense of Chimera as a guy hiding in plain sight. Quote, The first time we see him, he basically hijacked that apothecary shop and he's wearing the shopkeeper's clothes to kind of blend into the community, and he wears that for quite a bit, Brian says. We didn't want to give it away, that anything he's going to be other than himself. So when you first see him, he's a little hustler. The goal was, even when he was in disguise, to be able to get a read of how devious he is. You know, he's wily, he's slippery, he thinks on his feet. Kaimi proved to be more than capable of holding his own in the latest episode, managing to kill every single person present at the scene on Kofar, except for Sol, Mei, Osha, and Basil. The episode ended with him discovering a wounded Osha lying in the forest. We don't know where he goes from here, but it's sure to be an exciting final three episodes of the series. Let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Tomorrow, I'll be taking a bit of a break from the Acolyte to finally give my thoughts on Tales of the Empire, which came out nearly two months ago, so be sure to check back tomorrow for that video. Thank you all for watching, and remember, the Force will be with you. Always.